What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. If you're following along with what we're doing here, we're going through and we are fixing a whole mess of stuff with this DSM. We're about 40% through our teardown. We got, as you can see, the AC condenser, radiator, intercooler, piping, turbo, manifold, all that stuff's pulled out. I still have to work on putting the fuse box probably down here on the side of the strut tower someplace. Throttle body, throttle's coming off. We're gonna pull power steering reservoir. We're gonna delete the ABS module delete ABS altogether, new front lines, new proportioning valve back there. And we're powder coating a ton of parts, sandblasting a ton of parts, fixing and fabbing some stuff. I figured what the heck, if I'm gonna go this deep with it, I might as well take my compressor housing off, you know, clean that up. I gotta weld a 90 degree on it, but we're gonna build ourselves a tubular front end out of some thin wall tube that I have. It's thick enough, it's the same thickness as the sheet metal here. I wanna make this front end tubular, mainly so I can fit my intercooler correctly right in the center. I wanna drop my radiator down about an inch and a half because if we look at this when your radiator is installed it sits right up against the back here comes back about that far and I want to tuck it so if you look at this bottom bar that's pretty thick stuff I'm gonna basically take this ear off on both sides the whole lower core support the center section here and we're gonna try to fab up something that's more boxed in we're gonna extend it out so it's, instead of coming and dipping in like this it's probably gonna come in about an inch, then straight down, curve 90, and copy it on the other side. I'm hoping that that's gonna give me enough space to have my intercooler sit in here correctly, and then possibly add some supports on the sides, and then box in the area where the cooling is supposed to happen. There's gonna be a lot of stuff that we're gonna be doing for this, so it's gonna take quite a long time. <laughs> Well, it's so cold out here that my GoPro keeps quitting on me, so I apologize for that. But if you guys are out here trying to do something similar, removing a core support, or a lower core support at least, this is where I'm at. I thought this was going to take, you know, half an hour to punch out these spot welds, but learned that the Harbor Freight weld remover, it's double-sided. If you guys can see, I'm on the second side already. The teeth sheared right off the front side. There's still two left right there. It works okay, but I found it easier to go through and punch in pilot holes with an eighth inch bit, or I'm sorry, 764 for punching the pilot holes after I spot weld, I hit it with the center punch. And then I went through everything with three eighths and then half inch afterwards. So now I'll show you real fast all the little holes you're gonna have to hit. You've got a bunch of little spot welds on top here. Then you have hopefully three as standard. Then you have four against the upper, so that's free. Two on the front face. Down on the bottom here, I had three on the bottom face. And then the final two that were holding on here were these two on the inside. And those hold to this bottom section, which, I, which I'm trying to remove. Same can be said on the other side, but if yours is like mine, you can see there's a little uh, bracket right here. I gotta pull that, it's like a 12 mil. I gotta get that out to get to that bottom spot weld. That should be the last one to take out. You also have to snip all the uh, zip ties that go across the lower core support to hold the wiring harness in. thing's a piece of crap now it's all a million holes punched in it but I'll show you what I'm talking about now you can actually see there's a lot of flaky nasty rustiness and the upper sides where it bolts up the tops of these mounts here they look terrible actually no these aren't that bad there's some there's a little bit of surface on these bad boys yeah well, basically, once I get back through the rod on this, it's gonna determine where I'm gonna put my uh, new parts. Could be worse. Either way, power steering lines are still attached. I still have to pull out a lot more crap, guys, but we are making progress. So now, next step of this one is gonna be cleaning up all these tools before the cold hits me anymore because I'm starting to freeze my butt off. I got a ton of hardware that's pretty rusty and pretty crusty. So all this stuff in here, with the exception of this gasket, that's trash, but all this hardware, we're gonna try to reuse it, see how much rust comes off. We gotta cut these washers off and replace them with something better. We will. But I gotta get a new gasket for this too. These rubber mounts, I'm gonna save. The hood stops, I'm gonna save. This is just a mess of parts, guys. I've got intercooler piping, bumper mounts, the turbo system here. I'm gonna tear this whole thing apart. I'm gonna take the O2 housing back off of it. We're gonna smooth out the inside of this and port the wastegate flapper on the inside of here. 
We're gonna sand this seam down all the way around this compressor housing. We're gonna remake this bracket here. Just, there's so much, the list is massive. I'm gonna actually put it down in a piece of paper and stick it over there on the wall or over there on the wall or something. Once I figure out where I wanna put this power steering reservoir, if I'm gonna put it back on here, which I probably will once it's powder coated and cleaned. I don't know, I think I might shorten it and have it come out down through the same hole right here that the AC system comes out and just feed down here and take this line. And if I can bend it enough, I might just have it come down here and do like zigzags and then just put like a little grid behind it to hold it in place, like a little bracket with a couple of uh, steel straps or steel worm and wheel style clamps or something like that to hold it off to the side and reuse this tubing because I'm trying to not spend a bunch of money doing all this. I'm trying to keep it as cheap as I can but do it right at the same time. That being said, I'm gonna cover up the rest of these open holes. All right, boys, my workshop space is a total pigsty yet again. There's a pile of parts everywhere. There's stuff down here. We got Captain Krusty, the lower core support, chilling. And I've built myself a nice little to-do list. So we have the lower support, the upper support with the question mark, port O2 housing, port FP manifold, wastegate mount, turbo elbow 90. That's the 90 degree after compressor housing. Uh, we gotta re-weld the intercooler up and change the input and output on the hot side and cold side. Intercooler piping we have to build. Uh, we have our aluminum air intake temperature sensor bung we're gonna add. We have to delete the ABS lines and prop valve. Uh, the coolant reservoir needs powder coating. We need to relocate the AC's air canister dryer and mount the AC uh, condenser on the front end. The throttle body elbow itself, we need to make a downpipe mount that will bolt up to the factory mount that goes to the block. The thermostat housing, upper and lower parts, uh, the oil catch can needs to be sandblasted, powder coated. We gotta delete all the extra power wires, uh, the plugs, the extra wiring that we have floating around for stuff we're not gonna use anymore, and fix the fuse box, the power steering reservoir, the intake pipe has to get cleaned off, sandblasted, powder coated, the hood stops, and the hood latch. The stops are these little rubber guys that just screw into the upper core supports. I've got a lot of stuff I gotta knock out, guys. It's gonna take some time. So, my plan is to find I have that stuff to the gallon jug of whatever it's called. You, oh, there it is. Let me, let me grab a sec here. Bear with me a second. So we have this stuff right here, the chem dip. I'm gonna use this to put just a ton of stuff in right now. Once you pop this can top open, there is a little uh, basket on the inside of it that you can use. All right, so this stuff works absolutely great if you guys have some nasty stuff that you have to clean. There's nothing in it right now, I just saved it. This little basket, all you do is you fill it up with stuff and you just kind of send it. It's great for removing paint and rust and all the crap that you don't want to have on the hardware that you're trying to clean or to get carbon buildup off of stuff. So what I'm going to do now is this stuff right here is too rusty to use this on. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm pretty sure I don't want to try. All these pieces that are down here, this is all air conditioner stuff. I don't think it should hurt the rubber, but if it does, it doesn't matter. I have more stuff that I can use to clean and replace those rubber pieces. So this is all air conditioner mount stuff. We're gonna drop all this hardware right into that basket. All the nuts, the bolts, the fasteners that hold the condenser on. Uh, we got a couple of random bolts and stuff in here too, I believe that we might not need, but I like to clean off as much of the hardware as I can clean off and salvage because you never actually know if you're gonna need the stuff later. So we're dropping those in there. We are gonna drop our painted, but looking pretty poor, lower coolant elbow in there. We're gonna save the cap off this because the cap has rubber on it that I don't wanna risk that one. I have a couple of caps, but they just, I don't wanna buy another cap if it chews it up. The lower mounts I'm fine with. So we'll save that, we'll save the thermostat. Um, we're gonna drop the upper one in here. Hopefully it'll all fit. It's pretty close, there we go. And this is uh, pretty good stuff, it's pretty mild, so it's not gonna give you too much trouble. We have thermostat bolts for the thermostat housing, we're gonna soak them. And the rest of the stuff that's in here, with the exception of these two mount bolts right here, I'm gonna let these soak overnight. And hopefully that'll take some of the stuff off of those. So I'm gonna let this stuff soak in here for about 24 to 48 hours, depending. And uh, once that's done, we're gonna pull it out, see how she looks, hopefully it cleans it up good. I don't want to have to deal with you know, scrubbing parts for days and days and days like I've done in the past. We'll stick this down here on the floor. Next, we have to clean this stuff. We have to get some uh, the rust -Oleum stuff on there. I've already soaked down the AC condenser with this stuff. I've used this uh, rust -Oleum rust dissolver gel. So I kind of squirted it all over this thing the other night when we pulled everything apart. You just kind of let it sit, see what it'll do. 
And then I have another bottle right here, this purple bottle full of degreaser. I kind of mix them together and it kind of rinses that Rust-Oleum stuff down. I like using a combination of those two things along with some hot soapy water. So this stuff inside of here, we're just gonna squirt everything, add a little bit of that degreaser to it. So it's kind of like a, a 75, 25 mix. We don't want to have, this stuff is expensive, this gel, so I don't want to use a ton of it. But it actually starts to work pretty darn quickly. Like uh, once I hit the rusty parts, once you give it you know, three, four minutes, actually instantly, you can see the heads of those bolts starting to get that white foam on it. It smells kind of like rotten eggs. It's not the best smell at all. That's why I have the lid still. It's a little cotton candy container. But this stuff is amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend you use this rust dissolver if you're having rust issues that you want to knock out quick. Like I said, I go about 75, 25, and that's just to keep everything kind of submerged. I'm going to make a pile of parts back here behind myself, get this area cleaned off a little bit, get everything that I'm soaking and cleaning done briefly. I'm gonna just fly through it on a quick pass and then we have to take the turbo apart we're gonna port this manifold and just knock some stuff out so I took some degreaser and some rust resolver or dissolver whatever you want to call it I have this manifold sitting right here this is the FP the force performance manifold and I just put my gasket back over it and spray painted this against the gasket after I washed it off and you can see the gray spots there's like a black line around the outside edge of it that's uh, where the black from the gasket, the soot from the exhaust had made it. So I think what I'm gonna do is just remove the gray and that's as far as I wanna go with it. So I'm gonna get the carbide burrs out and the die grinder and start knocking this out. Let's do it. Well, this is taking quite a long time. Um, I got the start of this one about three and a half, four inches down done. I've, you know, finished the whole shaping procedure on this one. Runner number two, runner number three is 95% of the way there on the on this side. I'm on number four here. You can see there's gray on this back lip here. And all the casting stuff, it looks, here, let me turn my light on and show you. If we look down here, you can see we're pretty deep in there. Same here. Same, this one I went pretty far because it changed bits out. And now I'm using one with like a thicker bit, like a triangular type shape. This is looking great. This one right here, I still have to shape out. The gray that's left has to come off. What I've been doing is leaving a thin little lip of gray. If you look on the outside edge, you can see that line, that light little line of gray. That's what I'm leaving, just so I don't take off too much material and cause this beautiful FP manifold that I got brand new used from a guy and I say used, he opened up the box and used it to fit something up, but it was crispy brand new. He never actually ran it on an engine. He didn't put it on the car and start it. He just put it on the car to fit a turbo. He sold it to me for dirt cheap. And porting them, if you guys go to like fp.com and look at the 4G63 7-bolt FP manifold, the cast manifold, and then you select the porting option, what I'm doing here costs you a heck of a lot of money. I mean, I don't have the, the deep extension burrs or anything to reach down in there, but... Nonetheless, it makes a mess. There's shavings everywhere. They're all over the floor. Well, boys, I've been down here for about four hours. <laughs> this has taken me quite a while to get to. So far, I've gotten all the ports cleared out. Let me show you guys with some lights here. You can see we have, you know, some sanding left to do, which is no big deal. And I have to reach down in there nice and deep with some more pneumatic burrs, but I did gasket match this thing pretty good for you know, what I did in the four hour period. I got a lot of the rough casting stuff taken care of. I'm gonna do a final pass with probably a finer grit, smaller wheel right here, or bit rather, on the air tool here. That's been integral. It's been such a good thing to have sitting down here. It's gonna clean up these ports a little bit more, clean up my chambers. Then I'm gonna face this off on our belt sander real quick. I'm gonna get after it guys, I'll be back soon. Got the inside all flat right here for the uh, O2 housing surface. This thing is done for now. We're gonna stick this off to the side and then we're gonna come back over to it and I gotta get my shelving put together because we're gonna sandblast that thing and then heat it up real hot in the oven. We're not gonna be able to Cerakote it because I don't have any of that. But we are going to take and heat it up to purge it, we'll bake it for a while, and then when it comes out, we'll let it cool. We'll heat it back up again, 
and then we're going to hit it with primer and high temp exhaust paint. Hopefully that'll look good for <laughs> four days. <laughs> Anyways, now this, I'm going to wipe this down real fast. It's time to get on the turbo. I just blew all the dust off. I just want to clean up any metal dust that may be on this table before I start ripping that apart. Get some fresh towels out and all that. And we're going to take off our, hopefully take off our O2 housing. That thing was a bear to take off last time when I swapped the... Uh, what t25 to the 20g or no t25 to 16g turbo when i swapped that out the o2 housing was the hardest thing to take off those bolts did not want to budge Ugh. here we have our turbocharger we got to make our wastegate arm we got to fix our compressor housing we got to put some sort of 90 degree out facing the uh driver's side headlight so it's going to come down like a normal front mount it's going to be fed in from the driver's side hot come out passenger side cold go up to the throttle body and this wastegate arm looks like hell this needs porting this is that seven centimeters seven centimeter housing uh we're gonna plane this off i'm just gonna start ripping stuff apart i'll see you guys here in a minute this is gonna be a pain in my butt bigger compressor wheel running off the uh 16g uh turbine and the seven centimeter squared housing that will get you really good spool up in my opinion for you know using a stock frame turbo with just a machine compressor housing and i believe this came from turbo lab of america that guy does some amazing work there's also a guy justin witzel i am noticing i have a small crack right here in between my wastegate and exhaust side it's not that bad but it's also a leak i looked it doesn't really go back too far what i'm going to do now is i'm going to clean up the turbine housing where everything comes through and collects i'm going to put this up in the vise and just kind of smooth this whole thing out a little bit um, then i'm going to come over here and you can see the black ring for the exhaust manifold or for the uh, o2 housing i'm going to actually open that up a little bit too then i'm going to make this a nice clean circle and make this a nice clean shape because there's crap inside of it i don't know that's uh, kind of as far as i'm going to go on the, the hot side the cold side i have to take this turbo compressor housing off get the chra separated all you got to do is clean out these uh snap ring grooves here and just i'm going to wash it off real fast but i want to get rid of this lip on the casting here sand that down nice and smooth i have my hardware here all you do is remove one v-band and it pulls apart just make sure you keep that little pin right there that pin will fall out and that's what you use to clock your turbo i lost mine i think or no i didn't lose mine the second one the, the this this housing this turbine housing the pin was bigger so the small pin that I saved didn't fit into it, so I had to make one. That's actually a micro screwdriver that I cut, and then I put it in there, and that goes into that hole right there so you can clock your turbo correctly. Nothing to worry about, guys. It works great. So, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try to start chopping apart some of this metal, clean up some of these openings, port those out. I gotta port the O2 housing next. The, uh, let's see, port O2 housing, FP manifold, and then the turbine housing is also something i'm going to do so ooh, i don't know where i wrote that but that's if it's not on the list i'll put it on the list in just a minute not too bad 12 millimeters 15 millimeters it all came apart i'm gonna have to find a gasket kit locally and uh replace a bunch of gaskets or what's your guys thoughts on the uh the exhaust rtv i saw that guy gingium g-i-n-g-i-u-m he does a lot of turbo builds a lot of swaps and he uses that and he says it works great so i'm half tempted to try that stuff out instead of buying you know, an O2 dump gasket, a turbine housing gasket, a downpipe gasket, and spending all that money, just get a tube of gasket maker for exhaust, the high temp stuff. So I guess it's like copper infused or something. Not 100% sure. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think of that stuff. I'm going to get after this. Okay, I wanted to share this with you. I've got the turbo all pulled apart. This right here is an eBay 7 centimeter squared housing. I want to get a 10, but I don't have the money for it right this second. I've poured this all out nice and smooth and clean. Clean out these. Uh, flip this open. You can see down in there, that's nice and big now. That's, I mean, I opened that thing up a lot. There was a lot of meat left on there. Then we have our center section here. This is the bearing housing, the CHRA, if you will, and the water pipes. Normally I take those off and get the snap ring off, but I'm not that ambitious today. Uh, this is the aftermarket wheel that I got. This is a Turbo Lab of America wheel. This is a TDO6H compressor wheel and the compressor housing here. Now this, all this stuff is in perfect shape since I put it all together. I haven't had any balance issues. Nothing's touching anywhere. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's a little dirty. That's all right, I'll clean it up. I'll put it back together soon. But 
this bad boy has been great. There's no shaft play at all. There's no in and out. There's no side to side. I love it. So this, I'm going to carefully place in a little bag that's nice and clean on the inside still. And keep that away from all the metal dust and debris that I'm about to make because now that I've sanded this thing down and it's ready, we have to sandblast it and then we're going to leave it alone. This, I don't like the look of that seam that runs along the compressor housing. So I'm going to sand that off and then we're going to basically go over this whole compressor housing and powder coat it. But we also have to add something here. This output, we need to have something that we can add because the way this turbo comes out, it needs to shoot that way, not straight down. It needs to shoot that way. So when I have it mounted in the car, it'll go towards the uh, driver's side headlight. I'm going to clamp it in the vise over here carefully, mind you. I don't want to hurt the uh, ceiling surfaces on this, but there's literally nothing at all wrong with this. It's in perfect shape still. So it's going to be nice once it's powder coated. Obviously, if you're going to powder coat something like this, you got to cover this whole inside. This back inside here has to get covered. The port has to get covered. And then same on the face. You want to at least cover that ridge. You can see where it's smooth and flat. And then there's this ridge. I wouldn't even powder coat this ridge. I'd leave that alone. I'm going to put probably some high temp tape straight across the top of this and just make the inside covered and do the outer lip and then the whole body of this thing. The work never ends. The more well you're in there, crap that I keep doing, it's just taking forever. But anyways, I'm going to get after it. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, boys, I've been down here working like crazy for, what, three hours now since I saw you last. Um, the compressor housing, I decided I wanted to grind off all the nonsense, the big old piece of uh, aluminum that was right there, that big block. It's gone now. And I found a two and a half inch piece of intercooler pipe. And I just gave it a couple of little snips, if you guys see what I did around the edge there. Knocked it down to the same dimensions that fit nice and tight over that. So that's what we're going to do. Now i got to bust out the good old Vulcan Pro Tick 205. Covered in dust, mind you. So, that being said, I'm going to grab the gloves, turn this thing on AC. I'm probably going to just tack it up at first. And then I'm going to use some thin rods that I have. I have some really skinny aluminum TIG rods. I can't get them out right now because they're packed in. So, they're right there, guys. They're packed in tighter than hell. Ah, they're in there good. All right. Nice long aluminum TIG rod. I'll probably grab a couple of them just in case. But I'm going to TIG it to this and then fill these little slices that I made. You guys can see all the way around it, make it real nice. And then after I'm done, if I have to, if there's extra there, I can sand it off, clean it off, make it look pretty. But good news is I found this elbow. I found two more elbows and a 45 sitting in a big old basket that I had out back here. So I might have enough intercooler piping to do, we'll say 55% of what I need to make out of aluminum. I don't want any steel. I don't want to have a steel flange. I don't want to have anything steel anymore. I want it to be all aluminum. Aluminum blow-off valve flange, aluminum intercooler piping the whole way through. Get rid of all the extra heavy crap. We're cutting that heavy, rusty coarse port off. We might as well put something in there that's going to be lightweight, nicer, and not Swiss cheesed on the edges. But anyways, I'm going to get back to this. I'll show you what it looks like once I am done. See you soon.